I want to welcome all of our friends who are listening in from the virtual airwaves to this uh, this Thanksgiving retreat. And so we have people here that are so in person uh, taking the retreat, and uh, and those who are listening to it. So <clears throat> the. The theme of this retreat is awareness of living and dying, but basically it's going to be the, you know, similar to the regular practice of mindfulness meditation, uh, vipassana meditation, but uh, focusing on uh, how we uh, live and and die, and uh, or the re- and also the real living uh, process. So I'll talk more about that uh, in the afternoon talk. But I wanted to review the basic uh, instructions. <clears throat> and really, the life of the body, you know, occurs in the in the cells, molecules, and atoms of the body, because this body basically is just condensed energy. It's just billions of cells that are compacted together, uh, producing what we feel as something solid and heavy. Of course, the heaviness is due to gravity. But uh, anyway, so life really occurs under the skin for the most part in that process of cellular interaction and metabolism and circulation and respiration uh, that by and large we're kind of oblivious to. But that's what I like to refer to as the real living uh, process. And so that occurs basically through the nervous system and we become aware, the mind can feel and knows what is happening because of the nervous system uh, and all the senses that are connected to the nervous system through the spinal column. And really meditation practice happens between the brain and the spinal column. That means all the the sensory data that are coming through uh, the senses, including the body itself, because every single cell of our body is connected to the nervous system. And uh, any movements, cellular movements inside the body are producing sensations. And that's what we feel. When we say we feel the body, what we're feeling is just uh, so many sensations and coming in from every part of the body, from the tip of your toes or fingers, your earlobes to the top of your head and uh, all points in between. But again, we're, we're not very usually aware of that because our attention is focused in the external uh, world or it's lost in our internal thoughts of the past and the future. So the first stage of meditation is learning how to get centered and grounded in the the breathing body, what I like to call the breathing body. Now, a lot of people make a distinction between breathing and body. They think, uh, oh, I just watch the breathing. It's impossible to watch only the breathing. Uh, Well, you could only do that, but... uh, But the whole body basically breathes. Or people say, I just focus on the body. But, you know, they're a totally integrated unit. So anyway, I like to use the term uh, breathing body in terms of our awareness and being centered and and, uh, grounded. Because that's where the mind takes place. Uh, That the mind operates through this breathing body and it it operates off the sensations that are being uh, relayed through the the nervous system 
That's the only way we know we're alive is by noticing sensations or hearing sounds, but these are also vibrations. Uh, but anyway, more on that uh, later. So, uh, but in the beginning of the meditation practice, it's, it's, you need to uh, set up a good foundation of the practice, which is the, the posture. And the <clears throat> keeping the back and the head straight is one of the most important aspects of the practice. A lot of people say, how do I put my leg? Do I have to sit in the lotus or the half lotus? Or, you know, the legs are not that important necessarily for the posture, what you're doing to the legs, whether you're sitting in the full lotus, half lotus, quarter lotus, easy posture, sitting on a bench, sitting on a chair. Uh, but the important part is keeping the back straight uh, and the back of the head. So, but that's difficult for most people because they don't uh, exercise. They don't have the strength of their back muscles or neck muscles to be able to maintain a straight posture for a long period of time. So what happens is they tend to slouch. And that's because of the pull of gravity. So this head, you know, this big head weighs four or five or six pounds, depending on how much hair you have on top or gold crowns you have in the teeth. Uh, <clears throat> but anyway, the, the gravity is always trying to pull uh, the body down. So if your back muscles are not strong enough or the neck muscles, and the first thing that happens is the gravity grabs the chin and starts pulling it down. And then that causes the spine to slouch. And so what begins the downward creep, which means the body starts, you know, like somebody's hammering the top of your head and the body keeps slouching until evidently some people might wind up sitting like this and they'll be half asleep or if not totally asleep. And also when you slouch, it puts undue pressure on your joints and the internal organs that will cause unnecessary pains or other uh, problems. So learning how to sit uh, straight is, you know, one of the foundations of the meditation practice. In fact, these are the Buddha's instructions also. The very first instructions he gave to people meditating, you find a suitable place and you sit down, you cross the legs, uh, and you keep the back straight. Most people don't re remember those, that phrase, keep the back straight. Um, but anyway, uh, and there's a reason for that, you know, of, of, of what I just uh, explained, to keep the nervous system in its most optical, optimal uh, condition. <clears throat> and so, paying attention to the posture. That's why I give a lot of emphasis on paying attention to the posture and even checking the posture, uh, you know, while you're meditating or in those pauses between uh, the breaths to just you know, glance at the posture and see if the head is drooped down a bit, just mindfully straighten back up. Or if you notice the spine slouching a little, uh, mindfully straighten the, the back and the spine back up. Ideally, you should keep the inward curve of the spine. You know, the spine has a natural inward curve in the lower lumbar region. And it was made that way on purpose. Nature didn't make any mistakes. And the purpose of it is to support the weight of the upper body, that inward arch helps to support, you know, the 50 or more pounds of the upper body that's uh, resting on top of that. So if the spine slouches outward, bulges outward, there's nothing to support it. 
and then the gravity keeps pushing you down. Uh, and again, you'll be either half asleep or lost in your daydreams or, or other uh, thoughts. So, so <clears throat> and this body, we have to uh, see this body is like our laboratory. So in meditation, we're actually, you know, we should, uh, especially when you're doing mindfulness and vipassana meditation, we should have the attitude of being like a scientist sitting in the laboratory. And then looking down through the microscope. So this body is uh, the laboratory. And, and so we should be like a scientist uh, sitting in the laboratory looking down through the microscope of the mind, which is focused attention, and then observing and feeling that breathing process, and then gradually uh, the other uh, living processes and sensations that are coming and going, and to learn how to stay centered and grounded uh, in that for longer periods of time because that's when we'll be able to then observe our mind more clearly. And there's two parts of the, the living process. When you say awareness of living, you know, there's the external living and there's the internal living. Uh, and the external is the posture, what the body might be doing but the internal is the sensations that are going on uh, underneath. And there's also the, the thinking process. So the body is the living process of the body, but at the same time, the mind uh, has its own life of memory, and thoughts and emotions that are constantly coming and going. And normally we get lost in them so easy to get lost in our thoughts because we're not grounded uh, in the body. And so the thoughts come up uh, very subtly from the unconscious mind and take over our mind with, before we know it and we find ourselves lost in thoughts. Anyway, so uh, <clears throat> that's what we want to you know, to focus on in this first part of the retreat is learning how to uh, develop that initial uh, relaxation. It's about being relaxed also. Actually, there's uh, two key words in the meditative state is uh, relaxation and alertness. That means the body and mind have to be relaxed, but alert also. Because a lot of people, when they relax, they just think about kicking back in a chair, you know, not very uh, awake. But that's not relaxation in the meditative uh, language. So the relaxation uh, of the mind is also an alert state of mind. So <clears throat> we're going to uh, uh, stand up and do a few uh, stretches, which I always uh, encourage people to do before they meditate, because so many times a lot of people are in a hurry to meditate, and they just you know come in the meditation hall after having done different things, or in a hurry to meditate, and they, you know, rush in, just sit down and try to, to sit straight. And then, then they're hit by the hindrances of after five or 10 minutes of mind getting drowsy or uh, other aches and pains. So by doing a few stretches before sitting, it helps to uh, create a better condition in the body and helps to ground your attention in the body and activate uh, the, the cells and to oxygenate the, the blood. Okay, so uh, for those who are at home, if you, you can stand up and find a place to 
stand behind you somewhere. Nein. Ich bin nicht gesessen. 